In this video, I'll show you how you can add a sitemap and robots text file to your own Next.js application. I have a fresh Next.js project here that I created with Yarn Create Next app. I'll launch it first and let's see that it's running. Looks like it's running great. So let's get started with the robots text file. And the requirement for the file is that it's placed in the website root. So let's add the file to our application. I'm gonna open up the public folder and just create a new file here called robots.txt, like this. Next, I'll add some information inside here. So these two lines tell the search engine crawlers that the entire site can be crawled. And we can also define the sitemap location in this file so the search engine crawlers know where to look for it. So let's do that. Let's switch back to the browser. And since the robots text file should be found from the root of the website, we can test it by going to the address bar and navigating to localhost 3000 slash robots.txt. Like this. And now we press enter and we can see that we see the file contents here. So right now we have successfully added robots.txt file to our Next.js application. If you want to learn more about the syntax of the robots.txt file or what else you can do with it, please look at the links in the description. So next let's add a sitemap to our application. So I'll switch back to the Visual Studio code. We are actually going to use Next.js API routes to generate and return our sitemap. So as we can see, we already defined the sitemap location in our robots text file. So it can be found from slash API slash my sitemap. So let's create an API route for that. I'll open up the pages folder and inside that the API folder. And here I'll create a new file called my sitemap. Next, we are going to use an NPM package called sitemap to help us generate the XML file. Let's start the server again. Next, I'm going to paste in some code to this file and after that explain what it does line by line. Here we import sitemap stream and stream to promise from the sitemap package we just installed. And then we'll also import the readable from the stream package. First, we have an array of links, and this is basically the data you want to show in the sitemap file. So in this example, we have three pages, my first block, my second block post, my third block post. And then we define change frequency and priority for each page. If you want to learn more about what these mean and how to use them, you can check out the link in the description for that. But for now, let's just use this example data to show in our sitemap XML file. Next, we'll create a stream that we write the XML to and we initialize it with hostname and we grab the hostname from the request headers. Next, we write some header information that the content will be XML and then right here on the line 19, we'll create the actual XML with stream promise and we read the contents from the links array that was defined earlier and pipe it to the stream. And then the XML is saved to the XML string variable. And at the end, we return the XML. So let's save this and switch back to the browser so this is the front page of our application. And as we remember, the XML should be found from the slash API slash my sitemap. So let's navigate to that. And there you can see we have an XML file with three URLs with the data that we defined in the links array. So right now, all these links are defined in the static links array right here. But we could also generate these links if we have a dynamic site, for example, a blog. All we need to do to make this dynamic is to change how this links array is defined or how the data is fetched 
to it. So we could, for example, if we have our blog posts in some kind of CMS in here, we could fetch all the blog posts from the CMS and make an array of them. And this would work with them also. I used these same approach in my own blog to make it dynamic. So every time I post a new blog post, I don't have to update my sitemap. I can show you the sitemap.js I have in there. So here is my API route that generates the sitemap. So basically the only difference is that I fetch the post data or the links with the helper function that returns all the posts in my blog. So instead of defining a static array here, we are using this function to get all the posts in my blog. This code is open source. It's on my GitHub. So if you want to see how it works in action, you can actually check it out yourself from there. That's how you add a sitemap and robots text file to your next JS application. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please do leave a like. And if you're not already also subscribe to the channel, it really helps out. I see you in the next video.